pray with me. Pray that I would speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Identity theft is something we hear quite a lot about at the moment. I think it's a consequence, well it is a consequence of living in a digital world. We hardly ever fill in a paper form anymore. Everything is stored digitally and I know that's a real problem for lots of people. Thankfully we have places like Cornerstone to help people with things like that. But because our information is stored that way, we have to be aware that we are at risk of having our identity stolen. People use our identity to do things or purchase things in our name, to take things from us. I've lost count of the amount of phone calls, strange phone calls that I've had, and emails where people are fishing for information. Just this week, somebody phoned me and said um, that, I'd act, that I'd spent 500 pounds on Amazon. Um, I soon realized that it wasn't the case. But people do pretend, don't they, to represent companies or organizations. I even once had a person phoning me, asking for my details because they felt that I was um, a victim of fraud asking me for my bank details. I had a friend who's a vicar, and much to his embarrassment, somebody used his identity and sent out a load of emails in his name asking for a donation to a project that didn't exist. Um, he was especially embarrassed that one of them had gone to the Bishop of Salisbury. Identity theft is a is a big thing, but it's only in recent decades that this kind of identity theft has become an issue. But identity theft in itself is nothing new for the people of God. Since the beginning of time, the children of God have struggled to hold on to their identity as God's beloved children. For some time now, we've been exploring on Sundays our identity as followers of Christ and children of God. We've looked at lots of biblical characters to help us to think about who we are, how we're well loved and forgiven, how we're accepted children of God, how we've been adopted into God's family. That although we sin, we are saints in Christ. We've been thinking about who we are. We've also been thinking about whose we are. Where we belong. We belong in a relationship with our Heavenly Father, secure in that relationship. Knowing that he has got us. Knowing that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Knowing that God has plans and purposes for us, good things. It was, wasn't it wonderful last week to hear about some of those plans and purposes? Some that weren't realized until people were already stepping out into them. We've been thinking about who we are and how we have a destiny as children of God. We know this right at the beginning of this sermon, the sermon series about identity. We looked at some I am statements. They'll be featuring again. And as we looked at them, I think lots of us acknowledged that at least one or two of them could be a struggle at times. That's because we struggle to keep hold of our identity in Christ. It can be a challenge we struggle, we face opposition. We don't always live and act as God's beloved children. At times we lack self-worth or get caught up in life's difficulties. And we forget the hope that we have in Jesus. 
we lose our way and end up walking our own route rather than the way of Christ. And sadly, and I know this is the case for me quite often, we fail to fulfill our destiny in Christ, to be his hands, his feet in all situations. We, we end up not fulfilling God's purposes for us. Before we know it, our identity is stolen. And experiencing identity theft is something the people of God have grappled with throughout history. We heard Roy read a moment ago the first biblical account of identity theft in our reading from Genesis chapter 3. As the serpent, Satan, tricks Adam and Eve into acting outside of their identity in God. The serpent deceives them into believing, disbelieving who they are and whose they are. Their destiny was to live their lives from a place of blessing, to live in this continuous, close fellowship, relationship with God, to share their lives with God as we would share our lives with those closest to us, to literally walk beside God as a day-to-day -day normal thing. But the serpent deceives them. He lies to them about God's heart towards them. And they are tricked into believing that God doesn't love them as they thought that God would hold something back from them. That God wouldn't want them to have life in all its fullness. He even insinuates that God might be a bit selfish, it's ridiculous, um, and be, have a motive to hold things back from them. All because God had told them not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But the serpent's goal, and I think this is the kingdom principle, this is the, this is the um, pattern um, that we see in Adam and Eve that, that all of us struggle with. The serpent's goal was to destroy Adam and Eve's confidence in their identity as God's beloved to make them doubt God's intentions towards them, God's love for them. To make them doubt that God wants what's best for them, that God knows what's best for them. He causes them to question God's word in an attempt to destroy their security in whose they are to disable and stop them living out their identity as God's children, that identity to live and dwell and partner with God, to walk with God, to live fully in relationship with him. And their identity as children of God was ruined. Their relationship with God was broken because they believed it. They began to doubt. And Adam and Eve went from walking with God to hiding from God. And I think that's true of us. Often we feel we want to hide from God when we realize that we've got it wrong. When we forget God's goodness, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. They also went from security, and I'm using that word security, I'll explain why in a minute, of being naked before God to hiding in shame. And when I think about this, um, I don't think of open the book when we talk about this story and um, kind of, um, I often 
try and make the older children smile as Adam and Eve realise they're naked. Um, I don't feel it, that that naked for me is necessarily literally naked. For me, it means that once they were completely open towards God, nothing was hidden, no mask worn to be who they felt they should be. They were able to be completely their selves, knowing who God is and how he sees them and being secure in who they are. And after they're duped into distrusting God and begin to lose their security in their identity, instead of walking with God freely with nothing hidden, they begin hiding themselves from God in shame. They are fearful and afraid. Yet there has been only love and blessing received from God. Their identity has been stolen. And they no longer identify as God's beloved children. They feel ashamed, they feel frightened, and they feel unable to walk naturally with God, as was their destiny, as they were created to. Throughout the Bible, we see the people of God as a group. It's not far after the Exodus, is it, after Moses has set them free from the promised land that they begin to have doubts. And even though they'd seen the mighty acts of God that had set them free from slavery, it seems to be very quick that they forget who God is and start thinking they were better off before. And the same old, same old as Adam and Eve, distrusting God and that he wants what's best for them. And this happens throughout scripture with the people of God as a whole and key individuals who lose their identity in God. During the past months, we've been looking at biblical, different biblical characters and how they've come to realise their identity. And we've seen that it's only when they're secure in their identity that they're able to fulfil their destiny as children of God. If we're to flourish as God's children, if we're to flourish as a church family and be walking with God together and stepping out in his ways completely in our mission and ministry together and in our individual relationships with God, we must learn to protect our identity. Even Jesus had his identity attacked. Just after his baptism by John, when Jesus had had his identity completely confirmed as the Holy Spirit ascended on him and that voice from heaven proclaimed, this is my beloved son. We hear of Jesus driven out into the wilderness, facing temptation. And those temptations were a direct attack on his identity as the beloved son of God. If you are a son of God, we will always be attacked in our identity in Christ first. In order to, for us to question who we are and whose we are. Over the next couple of months on Sundays, we're going to be focusing on common things that happen, things exterior and things that we internalise that were away at us and end up wobbling us and sealing our identity and security in Christ. Situations and issues and mindsets that if we're not aware can stop us being secure 
in our identity in Christ. And then the domino effect of stepping out of our destiny, of acting out of our relationship with God. Jesus said in John 10, verse 10, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they have life in all its fullness. On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus, we can have the life we were meant to have. We can be the people that we were created to be. Let us learn together as a church family how to keep our identity secure. How to help one another to keep our identity secure in him. Amen.